Hello, and welcome back to Vintage Story. Back at it again. Back at it again to to improve the house, improve things around the house, as well as try and make a little bit of progress, technologically speaking. Um, but uh, I don't know, like, we're kind of at a standstill until I f figure out how to where to find iron. Um, I honestly feel like the biggest uh, bottleneck right now is probably that I don't have any armor. Um, so, like, venturing underground is is not really tenable right now. So, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start off by throwing some stuff in our in our hole here, uh, some some clay, stone, gravel, whatever, and uh, probably do some mining. But uh, I, have a, I have a couple of interesting or fun surprises for you today. I think you will appreciate it. I got some comments on my outdoor kind of uh, smelting area or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, outdoor workshop, I guess. Uh, and I have, I, I make some improvements, which I think y'all will appreciate. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is find this, like, cave with... Uh, hello? What, what, what was that sound? That was a sound. Uh, with some zinc and I believe tin as well, like just kind of hanging out. It was a really, really deep chasm and it just came, seemed to keep going and going and going. But there was some really good stuff in here and I probably will end up having to come back. Although I think I did do a surface check and I didn't really find anything uh, that interesting. Maybe this isn't the cave actually that had tin. That's later. Sorry. Spoilers. Um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot in there. And in fact, the zinc is the only... Oh, yeah, and the saltpeter. Forgot about the saltpeter. Um, zinc is actually going to be a bigger player um, pretty soon because I am considering making brass um, for this, the purposes of making torch holders. Now, I, I, you know, torch holders, they're a nice idea in theory. I personally think they are ridiculously overpriced. There is the tin. I, I, it was in this place. Um... I think that the torch holders are way overpriced because they are two, not one, but two brass plates to make. The brass plates actually require two ingots each. So that means you need a whopping 400 units of brass in order to make one plate. Uh, sorry, one, one torch holder. And that's like kind of ludicrous. I, I, I don't know if maybe there's an easier, better way that you can, you, maybe you can save some uh, resource or some, some you know materials um but man that just that seems like kind of absurd and the best thing you can say about a torch holder there's our death from wolf um you know traditional almost at this point uh the best thing you can say about the torch holder is that it i mean outside of requiring fat which is kind of a precious resource um it is a nice way of like oh you know i need a torch here and i need it to not ever go out so you know maybe i can light a fire uh you know if you could keep it in the kitchen for example whenever you need to light the fire you don't have to ever deal with um making more torches there's one always burning so yeah there are benefits to the torch holder for sure is it worth 400 units of brass i i really don't know and since I have such a major bottleneck of copper right now, and I have been like working on that, but it seems like every single uh, vein I, I go to mine out ends very like quickly. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna work a little bit on this bloomery area. I, again, I never know what to name things. It's maybe my worst trait as a YouTuber. You always have to know as a YouTuber what to name your thing, and then. Like you gotta, you gotta stay consistent to that forever. So, we finished our, our glass, but uh, we're we're gonna like I, I have enough glass now to f work on the next part of the greenhouse. But like the greenhouse is low key not doing it for me. Uh, and so we have to replace the bloomeries here. The greenhouse seems to like not be working. And I'm not sure why. I have a theory that it is actually because the snow is covering the light. Uh, it, it occurred to me that the, the light coming in isn't just to warm the greenhouse up, but it might also, you know, the plants might actually literally need a uh, line of sight to the sun. So, I don't know. If you know in the comments exactly what the, you know, the ideal 
situation is for greenhouses, how to make use of them, then maybe you could let me know because I, I am a little bit stuck on that part. And, uh, you know, I, I officially am out of food as of like, I think this episode. So it's one of those things that's definitely going to help me out. Um, so, yeah, someone mentioned, I think it was, uh, I think it was a buddy Gavin in the comments. Let me know. Yeah. I mean, the, the out, outdoor workshop is nice and all, but it doesn't have any ventilation. Uh, the smoke would just kind of collect up in the roof and then and that would not be ideal. So I was, you know, I realized or, I, you know, I, I agree that's that's a good point. So I decided to put a little vent up in the roof as well as, uh, you know, make it sloped up so it look, makes more sense. This has no mechanical bearing on, uh, you know, on the game. Like the, this is not something you have to do. It's purely aesthetic. But like I say, I, I, I like making things look like they're rooted in some kind of reality. So I think that this worked out really well and I really like how it uh, looks in the end. Um, you, you might like small nitpick, I'm sure, but I know the vent isn't technically connected to the roof there. You can probably see that, but I don't care. I think it looks good enough and I think it, it looks really nice. And we are going to be turning this workshop or outdoor workshop into the um, pit kiln area, uh, which I'm having conflicting I kind of feelings about because the, the pit kilns are one of the few things that can actually start a fire, like spread to wood, and there is actually wood holding up the roof. Um, I actually later, I think in this episode, move the chair because I was a little bit concerned that if I start lighting pit kilns, um, it might uh, actually burn down my chair, which I put a little bit of effort into, so that's no, not, no good. So here is me puzzling over the, uh, the greenhouse. The, the plants, I, I believe, are no longer dying. However, they aren't growing, so that's not ideal. Um, you, know, you would want, hopefully, your garden or your greenhouse to uh, not just uh, you know, incorporate life, but also encourage it uh, to... <laughs> To go, you know, continue, but uh, I don't know. I, it's a work in progress, as everything in Vintage Story is. So, I'm also puzzling over some like extra decorations, like carpeting and stuff. But we wanted to make a skep. Um, I think that's how you say it. I could be wrong. They tend to be wrong about these kind of pronunciations. But uh, you know, I wanted to. I want to get bee keeping going um, and, and get a couple of apiaries. So. Uh, I, I made a couple of skeps and I go to the B zone, I don't know what you want to call it, the, the hive to, uh, you know, encourage the bees to get into the skep. And I believe the way it works, and I could be wrong again, but um, you just place the skeps near the beehive and then come back later and maybe hopefully the bees will have uh, transferred over. There might be a different way of doing it. I'll have to do some research, but I, I think that, that that is roughly how it works. Um, and then you can pick up the skep and uh, move it to wherever you need to. I definitely want to do beekeeping because um, bee wax is going to be an important uh, aspect that we make use of uh, quite a bit. So uh, mostly making candles for more light sources. And I do, I honestly feel like maybe making um, lanterns. Oh, am I being chased by a wolf? I think I did not get chased by a wolf. But... Uh, making lanterns would probably be the best light source for the household um, because I don't end up using fat and I don't end up having to use up like a ridiculous amount of brass. It costs 200 units each, but not a, not a big deal. And I, I am kind of flush right now for um, metal materials. So I could definitely do that. I don't know if I want to use up gold for something like that. I definitely, the, the, the lantern I end up holding would be, uh, would I would want to eventually upgrade to gold, but I think I would just like settle for like my cheapest material um, for, you know, the interior of the house. But I am trying to rectify this whole um, copper situation, but it's slow going and, and uh, you know, like I th keep thinking there's going to be more copper than there is and, and the material or the copper itself is very poor in quality. So, you know, copper is, is going to be our bottleneck. It's kind of ironic how that ended up happening, right? I was flush for copper for the longest time, and now it is my biggest bottleneck because it is required for just about every alloy. And um, so, you know, I you can't really have enough of it. 
there's almost tradition, not quite, um, you know, throwing away our fire starter basically every time. And oh, here you go. This is, um, I think, oh yeah, we, we, we're replacing the skep here. I was just about dead and I was consigned to, to death. So I figured, well, while I'm out here and I'm just about to die, I may as well go and pick up a couple of things. And I've been picking up the horsetails. Uh, someone in the comments was telling me that you know, I might want to make use of horsetail. But then, bef just moments before we die, I get killed, and there's your second wolf death for the episode. Isn't that lovely? I I do love wolves in this game so much, so much. Um, they are just the best. But anyway, um, we did get some mushrooms, and therefore we have like basically some food. Like the the food situation is really not great. Um, I was a little bit concerned at the beginning of the winter that I would not be able to make it all the way through with the current allotment of food I had. And I was really correct about that. We, I think, are officially in March. Um, but, you know, we got a couple of months left to go still, and I don't have any reserves left. I've all, officially drank all the wine, um, you know, which was fun. But, uh, you know, and, and the wine was good because it preserved. So now I'm on, I'm on cattails, um, which... You know, kind of sucks. Cattails are not great nutrition, and they, uh, you know, they're a pain to cook, and they're a pain to collect, and they're just generally a pain. So I'm not a huge fan of the cattails. I did want to do a little bit of work on the windmill. Um, I wanted to kind of spruce it up and make sure it was all complete. You almost got your roof, um, me jumping off the roof there. That was a really tricky jump, which I honestly don't know how I managed it. And I wouldn't dare repeat it to be honest, but, um, I wanted to get a little bit of work done and also complete our final floor. Basically the, the, what is the attic, um, above the, the, you know, the mechanisms room. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a solid plan yet for what's going to go where. Kind of want to put like the, a bedroom up in the attic, but I don't think that that necessarily makes sense. So I don't know. Maybe you could let me know in the comments, what kind of thing would you like to see in the attic? What's the kind of thing that, um, you expect to see in an attic or at least, you know, if not an attic, the top floor of, uh, you know, a big old kind of tavernish long boat, no, a long house like this. So, um, what, what would you like to see there? I'm I'm open to just about anything. Um, but yeah, I'm filling. I don't have enough granite to fill in that uh, little room there because that's no longer the pit kiln area. So, that's going to be a work in progress for a little while. And granite is not something that I commonly come by. So, we did. I definitely had to replace some tools. So as I say, I usually like to do two at a time since you can heat up two bars at once and you want to make the best use of your, um, you know, whatever heat fuel resources you're using. And now that I have, well, I, I, guess, I guess I have a huge amount of black coal now available, but that's better. That's good for smelting and maybe not so much for uh, heating up the bars. You probably want to use up the brown coal because it's not as useful or utility. So what I might actually do is end up going and collecting some uh, brown coal as well, just to make sure I have a, a backup resource. Um, I could also just let me make some more charcoal. That's always an option. And uh, one night tend to rely on, but uh, I don't know where I would put my charcoal area. I kind of want to make another little, you know, workshop for that. Um, just, just because I don't know, it's nice. Like w with all of your tasks, it's kind of nice to pretty up an area and to also have a designated, like, this is what, where I'm going to do this and this is where I'm going to do that. And then also you have a sort of consistency in terms of like, well, I know exactly how much charcoal I can expect to yield because I have a certain amount of room dictated for that. And you can always make it bigger later, um, but at least you know you have like some consistency. But anyway, um, decided to try i think in this episode to uh get some more well get some more get any iron but um this is a uh, proving to be a real challenge i was collecting some resin here for the bow because uh the bow is now dry and i wanted to uh i wanted to like finally finish it but it's kind of a it's going to be a bittersweet situation because as everything is in uh, uh, vintage story the bow has durability so considering how long it took me to make the bow um i don't know if i'll end up using it very often 
And I also don't know which situation I would use it in. I guess when I can you know, reach enemies, but they can't reach me. But here I'm trying um, desperately to like find any ore node for, oh, and then and then I get besieged by corrupt drifters. Cause I, I, I guess it didn't occur to me that even though I dug this out, it's still a spawning, potential spawning area. And these corrupt drifters hit hard. That you could see that I was at full health there. He knocked out two thirds of my health in that one blow. So the uh, underground monsters are are not much to to mess around with. This was kind of a frustrating situation. I was like, I, I went to one of my copper vein markouts and and I I've sped this up, um, but it took me so long. That there was like it kept telling me there's a medium amount of copper nearby and you could find it. And I was like, okay, well, where is it? Up, down, left, right? Nope, there's a medium, there's a medium amount though. You, you can find it, it's, it's, it's really close by. I'm like, where is it, where? And I just could not find it. Um, I did eventually find it, but like, you know, this is the, this is the possibly frustrating thing about uh, the prospector's pickaxe is, um, you know, it gives you a hint, but in, in the end, you can actually end up spending more time and more of your, pickaxe just kind of digging blindly looking for it then you you know maybe if you were just like i don't i know it's it's better than just like digging a hole and hoping for the best but sometimes it feels pretty comparable but anyway i'm going to close out this episode by making the bow finally and man, man three three flax twines or whatever you want to call them spindles um like I know that that's not going to hurt as badly uh, in the future when I have like a flax farm set up and I'm getting a like consistent uh, in you know flow of uh, a fluck a flax. But right now that hurts a lot. So, but I wanted to test it out. I made I had some copper uh, and flint arrows saved up for I don't know from getting like ancient pots and uh, I also had some feathers saved up from various dead chickens, but. Um, I don't, like I say, I don't know. It might be too good to use for me in a, in a way. If you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Let's <laughs> go.